Oh, let's do a Q&A in the bird garden. On gardening though today. So this way you can watch and not listen, or you can listen and watch, or just listen. Did I get that right? I always like doing things different, changing things up. I'm going to go through some of the questions that come through. And keep in mind, I read a lot of them. I, I try to answer as many as I can, or I answer them in videos. Today I'm gonna to just go through, answer a few of them, and we'll go through some, and it may help many others here. Let's try to do vegetable garden ones. I have a high hope, she asked. I believe the sun gold tomatoes may have been stabilized, not 100% sure. I think what she means is sterilized. Well, I bet they're not sterilized. I actually grow sun gold tomatoes and I do let the tomatoes fall on the ground and regrow. Sun golds are actually a developed hybrid. That's why you have to buy the plants if you want the true sun gold. If you plant the seeds, they will grow. So they're not sterilized. But what will happen is you'll get small tomatoes, but they won't generally be the real orange ones like you get when you buy the plant. So though they will grow, keep in mind, you can still eat them. They'll look fantastic. They'll taste fantastic, but they're not going to be usually orange. And that's what happens anytime you grow something that's a hybrid, which includes your purple tree color. Those were developed. So if you let it go to seed, you collect the seeds and grow them, they'll grow into a wonderful plant to eat, but they may not have that trunk that grows straight up like a tree. It probably will revert back to the look of a collard, a regular type of collard. It's still good to eat. Always worth saving the seeds if you want to grow something like that. Lily Romero, love your videos. Thank you. Can you use tea leaves, oh, I see, to make tea out of king palms and avocado leaves? What she's referring to is making a compost tea for your plants, like a fertilizer. Well, you can, you can use almost any tree leaf. I just, you may not get that stinky type of fertilizer that you'll get from collard and other things, but you can put any leaf in there. Think of what a leaf is doing. The tree is pulling all these wonderful things out of the ground and putting it into their leaves as they reach for the sun. So all trees and all leaves are gonna have different materials in them. Let's call it that for now. When you break it down, the microbes get in there and it, that's what makes it start to smell. But you know what? Think of fertilizer when you go buy steer manure. That doesn't smell that good and your grass loves it. I am not telling you to buy steer manure because a lot of that manure is not really good for a vegetable garden, okay? Not the stuff you're buying for lawns. You don't want to use that. But can you use king palm or avocado leaves? You can use any, pretty much any leaf you want. I wouldn't use oleander because that may take a couple months to break down, but king palms or avocado leaves, pepper leaves, pepper tree leaves, anything you want will work perfectly fine. Venus Olson, I started container gardening. I had, an, I had okay success, except for my zucchini. Nothing grew. I even tried pollinating the flowers, but nothing. Why? You know, it could have been the soil. It could have been the climate, the weather. There's a lot of different things that can cause zucchini not to produce. Now, if you started it too late and your weather started to cool, it might have been too late at that time. I try to start mine as early as possible so the plant will get established and then it will start to throw flowers that will be vital to start to grow. Now, you need to have male and female flowers. If you don't have them both, you're not going to get them. If you're dealing with insects, you could end up not getting zucchini. Keep in mind though, zucchini is a very heavy feeding plant. And I mean really heavy. So the way I fill my totes and containers with all kinds of kitchen scraps, leaves, even shredded paper, all that breaks down nutrients into the soil, including let's say the paper, which was once a tree. It brings in all the microbes, it brings in earthworms, Think of what they're actually using. They're actually using the waste of that product. The plants aren't growing off a piece of paper. They are growing and pulling nutrients from the microbes or the critters that are breaking down all that matter. So the more matter you have 
the more, it's kind of like fertilizing your lawn. Like I said, you, people used to go out and buy stair manure. Oh, it smells. I remember I used to go with my dad to the nursery when I was little and he'd load up the back of the car. We'd come home and he'd cover it all over the grass and then the grass would be so green in a matter of weeks. Of course, he threw some seeds down too. Well, that's what the zucchini is feeding on, what's breaking down. If you don't have any type of food matter, plant matter in your soil, and you are using strictly potting soil, it may not be enough for the zucchini. I've never had really good luck growing straight out of potting soil. That's why I shove in tree colored and different things into the soil itself. I don't have to do anything fancy. Just take tree colors, it could be green, yellow, brown, a good mix is good. Shove it into the soil, cover it with whatever soil you're going to use. And the more plant matter you have in there, the better you'll have zucchini, tomatoes, and even peppers and squash. All your squash are heavy feeders. Let's do one more question that might take a little more time. Julie R. I love your gardens. Can you do a video on what plants can be planted together? I have watched several of your videos and remember you mentioned heavy feeders but he didn't write them down. I don't, don't remember which video you mentioned them in. And then Temperus, I hope I have this muse. She came back in under Julie R and said she wanted the same thing. And she said, I like that as well. From what I can tell watching Robbie, anything with a fruit is bound to be a heavy feeder. Squash, tomatoes, cucumbers, melon, and etc. Is that right? You've got it. That's really a good way of putting it. Let's talk about that. There's a lot of different companion planting. Some people say if you put basil in with your tomatoes, your tomatoes grow really good. And I don't know, you know what? I mix up and plant pretty much any way I want. But what you do have to remember and why we have to remember doing this, whether it's in the ground or in containers, there are certain plants that you may not want to put too close together. Now, let me talk, I'm gonna go from one subject to another because my mind is going somewhere else at this moment. Let's try to stay on track for me on this. The reason you don't wanna put, let's say, in one tote squash and a tomato is because both of those, including cucumbers, are heavy feeders, which means all that wonderful plant matter you put in there, leaves you were collecting and sticks and kitchen scraps and paper and toilet paper rolls and coffee grinds and all that. Well, they're both going to be fighting, let's say that squash plant and the, that tomato plant over all the nutrients coming out of that. Now they'll grow. There's not a problem though. Both those plants can grow, but if the squash gets really big, it's going to pull from the tomato. Now that can't, be that good, but on top of that, it's not that bad either. A lot of times what's happened here, think of my truck bed many years ago, I had both squash and tomatoes growing in there. Now that is a massive raised bed, the truck bed I have in my yard. But what ended up that season is the spaghetti squash took off and grew all over and we had 50 plus spaghetti squash. We gave so many away and nobody wanted them and it's probably a reason we don't grow that many anymore. <laughs> But once the squash died back, because a squash plant, generally, it is a one-time plant. It grows, it throws all its fruit, and because, let's say, certain squash, which would be your spaghetti squash, your acorn squash, your butternut squash, think of those. And those zucchini falls into that category, we tend to pick the zucchini early, so the plant is continuously trying to throw fruit. But when you leave the spaghetti squash on and we pick it like a melon, when the curly cue, the little tendril turns brown, the plant gets the signal it's generally done. And once it's been successful, the plant dies back, which happened to all my spaghetti squash. Well, that fall, the tomato plants took off after the squash was done and I let the squash plants rot into the ground, you know, all those leaves and everything. I had a whole fall and into winter, a truckload of tomatoes. So that was a win-win. But when you're doing a smaller container, like some of these 18 gallon totes, or you may be doing a 30 or a five gallon bucket, you really don't wanna put those heavy feeders together. Now I did push this year three 
melon plants, which is the watermelon in one 18 gallon tote. And I feel I was successful. Each plant only grew one melon, though if I would have had one plant, maybe I would have gotten two or three on one plant. But you know what? I prefer doing it the three way because if one of the plants died, I still had something going. So it was kind of a win-win for me. So I ended up a couple times with each plant throwing one watermelon and trimming it back. As soon as the watermelon was ready, I trimmed it back a little bit. I ended up with a second set of watermelon on the same plant. What it is, again, is too many heavy feeders in one container will pull the food. So you could end up with less on everything. So you'd be better off to put, let's say, a watermelon in there, and this goes to whatever you decided, a squash, a tomato, a cucumber, whatever. Let's say you put a watermelon in there. You can grow a small type of brassica, nothing that's gonna get too big. You can put some lettuce in there. You can put mustard greens, something that's not a heavy, heavy feeder. Parsley, though parsley can get a big root, they don't seem to pull all that much. Now, celery gets too big, and they will pull everything out of there, including all the water. Celery is a heavy water drinker. So, yes, you can put other things in there. You could probably put some, you know, strawberry plants on the top, something like that. But you don't want to put, let's say, a squash and tomato plant in one container unless you're aware of it. And if you're totally aware of it and you're going to compost in place, you're going to put, let's say, a two-bucket system or the pitcher I use, and you continuously feed them, then they'll be fine. Because what they're fighting over is two things, really. They're fighting over food, and they are fighting over root space. Those plants do get a massive amount of roots. Now keep in mind, once your squash plant dies back and it's done, the roots decay, and it's as if you fill that tote up or that container up with plant matter, those roots become part of the food for the next plant. That's why my tomato plants did so well, because all that spaghetti squash that died back in the truck bed, that whole truck bed was covered in roots from the spaghetti squash, ended up being as if I dug in leaves and different things, all the roots decayed and fed the tomatoes. So as long as you understand that, but think of the root system, think of the size of container you're using and then decide, is it worth it? Again, it's your garden. You can do it any way you want. Maybe you don't mind if you just get a few squash and a few cucumbers. I've got cucumbers right now growing in with tomatoes. I mean, it will work, but you'll get a bigger production usually if you left it with one cucumber plant or two cucumber plants in one container. Something that isn't gonna pull from each other. The whole idea, is the plants that are trying to feed off of all that is inside the container in the tote or whatever way you're growing it. So as long as you remember that, you continue to feed, you might be able to push a little bit more. It's not that it's one's gonna kill the other plant or anything like that, it's just that you may not get as much. I hope I explained that. So that's why I say don't put too many heavy feeders in at one time. Try to space them out and put your zucchini in one and your cucumber in another and your tomatoes maybe in another container or bucket. And then if you want, get some lettuce on the bottom or some mustard or bok choy or something on the smaller side and see how it goes. But if you wanna push it and do more, so be it. As long as you're aware that they will need a good compost tea. And I would also be pushing leaves in there and putting other plant matter in there. That's the, the main thing. But I think it's a win-win when you think about the roots that are left in there afterwards and your squash plant dies back and then you plant a tomato in there later. Now mine just so happened to be in the truck bed already and they stood like three inches tall. They never grew. That time when I was growing it, they stood really tiny, nice and tall, but really tiny. And as soon as those squash plants died back, those tomato plants became massive the whole truck bed was covered. You probably can go back and see the video. It was quite a few years ago. So that's the main reason you talk about what to plant together and not to plant together. You want to be successful. You want to make sure the plants have enough root space to spread their wings, which is their roots, and to have enough food so they can give you a really good production for your family. I know I do it a lot. I actually actually have planted cucumbers and squash and different things all together. 
But you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I want you to be successful. So I would like to see you each have no more than one or two heavy feeders in one container. And just keep in mind, you wanna make a lot of compost tea and you can rot all kinds of leaves or whatever in there and feed it back that way. And also the plant matter. By putting in the leaves, it brings more microbes and it brings more, even earthworms find their way in there. And then you'll be much happier knowing that you were successful. If your squash plants get a little bit stressed, a lot of times they won't throw both male and female flowers. It doesn't matter if it's coming off of one plant or two plants, they can cross pollinate. But the point is, if the plant isn't in the right condition, a lot of times you'll have a zucchini, let's say throwing only male flowers. The male flowers are the easiest one for the plant to produce because there's no fruit underneath. Um, yes, it can produce just females, but generally you see the males only. So you wanna keep that in mind. You wanna have a happy plant and a happy plant makes a happy gardener. So I hope I've answered your question on that. And I hope this was fun. I thought I'd kind of sit in the garden, show the birds a little bit. So if you wanted to just listen to this, you wouldn't have to worry about, oh, did I miss something? I didn't see it on the screen. This is more like a, like a podcast, something you can just kick back, listen to, and hopefully I've given you a few ideas. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat where you grow. Bye-bye.